Hey, golfers. What's going on? I know I said I was going to take some time and figure life out, but wow, a lot has changed in the past couple of days. And um, I mean it when I say golfers. You know, I'm calling myself out on the last episode. I made a mistake. I was talking about the car pass at my old, former club and um, talking about what happens when a ball hits the trees and lands on it. I said it rolls all the way back to the ladies' tees. Um, I misspoke. That's... You know, it's the forward tees, and I love it. I think it's the way to do things. I love the companies that have gone away from ladies flex and senior flex, and it's now kind of one, two, three, four, five. Um, I think it keeps everybody involved, and and it gets you know kids that are, you know, a twelve year old boy that's a little too macho to play a lady shaft kind of gets caught up in what he's playing rather than what it does, you know? So now flex one is flex one and, and they don't need to paint it pink. They don't, they can paint it black and, you know, these kids are uh, off and running. It, it's awesome what they're doing for the young kids. Now the U S kids set the ping prodigy set. And then the fact that these lady shafts are all being made available to kids is awesome. You know, I kind of jumped in a little bit real quick. Um, I wanted to go over a few things before I got into too much of the episode. You know, I had some severe health issues this past week and, and it was frustrating because, you know, I had, I had felt like I was getting better. I, you know, I went and hit balls a little bit. I, I, I did everything I thought I was doing to be, you know, good. And then I realized, you know, a trip to the Black Whale, some amazing raw bar, a couple beers, you know, I I think it might be gout that was a, a breakout. But the frustrating thing for rheumatoid arthritis is I'm always going to have pain. You know, I, I've told my parents in conversations, it's not the pain that gets me. It's the mental, you know, just kind of being down on everything and, and um you know, when I, when I lose my appetite and I can't eat and then I start getting sick and it's everything else, you know, the pain I've had since I was 12, I'm used to it. Um, as long as one foot and one knee is working, I'm good. It's, you know, not knowing what it is. And when all four, both feet and both knees don't work, it, it gets painful and, and I don't want to leave the house. You know, um, I finally, manned up and put the air conditioner in my window today in the bedroom and i was joking it, it, it's you know there's some stuff on the floor in the way and it was you know scary to me um the floor is where things go to die uh for me I, it, bending over to pick things up it, it's just the most painful thing um i get lightheaded sometimes and i feel like i'm gonna go down so it's just all part of being on the medication that I'm on and things like that. And, you know, there's certain battles that I'm never going to give in, you know, um, a cleaning lady when I can afford it is very important to me. Um, it, it just, it is what it is. I know everybody has their different values and what's valuable to them. And, and what's valuable to me is making sure I don't go face down. <laughs> you know, um, as I said, the most frustrating thing has been living with decisions that I made in the fall when my dog passed away, you know, um, I went into a depression that I've never known. And I was making decisions, not thinking I was going to have very much time left. So, um, now I'm, I'm kind of regrouping and, and figuring it out. And, and um, you know, I, I realized I can't do this on my own anymore. I need to see a doctor um on a hunch you know i decided before a trip to the urgent care i i checked the price of health insurance you know i know it's been a while since i've made what i used to make and i know um there's a lot of programs and things that i might qualify for now so i i hope i called the phone number and by the way um one thing i know i don't want to get too far off track on this but if you're gonna sign up for mass health don't click the link. I have literally had 63 missed calls, 63 missed calls from telemarketers trying to sell me health insurance. Don't click the link. Just call the number and, and suck it up. I, I 
so regret not just calling. Um, but it, it's it's one of those things where I'm glad I did because uh, I found out now I, I qualify for certain programs that I didn't in my monthly um, insurance costs just shrunk by two thirds. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of a contact issue tonight. Um, but yeah, it went down by two thirds. And as I get further on unemployment or down away from my former employment, that might even go lower too. So um, speaking of the employment front, that's a whole different issue. Apparently there's a few people out there that's, that think I can sell a product or two because a few job offers are rolled in kind of funny with the used car salesman cracks that I've made. A couple of them were actually car salesman jobs. Um, but, you know, I, I've now realized, um, you know, I got the health issues thing going, taken care of. I've got job offers now. I'm not worried about, you know, does the podcast make money? Is this going to be the way I make my living? This now can go back to being relaxing, having some fun, um, and, you know, helping some people with their golf games, helping some clubs see where they're going wrong, mistakes that they're making, um, using experiences that I've had in the golf business. I'm going to call on some guests that hasn't changed. I think this show is way better when I have somebody to talk to. Um, like I said, tonight was unplanned. I was thinking about taking a couple weeks to kind of regroup, but you know, I, it, it's crazy what, some positivity in your life can do you know um yeah so let's have some fun let's talk about golf you know um those of you who've been following along know that when i hit rock bottom i started writing a blog i didn't care i didn't hold anything back but there was a couple in there that that could be helpful and productive you know um one of them was called golf shops. You know, I see so many mistakes being made by not golf professionals. If it was golf professionals, it really wouldn't be that big a deal, but it's, you know, board of directors and, and guys making decisions and not listening to the people that they hire when making golf decisions, you know, I attending Methodist, was eye opening for me. You know, I never imagined how big of an industry golf was or how important your contacts are. You know, it, it's, you look at these guys, it's the same guys that work at all the fancy clubs, you know, the resumes speak for themselves. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys with a pretty good resume. You know, I have high sport on the club on the resume. I have, Spring Valley Country Club, which is now the Cape Club of Sharon. Um, you know, I have some great spots, Old Sandwich. Um, you know, so it, it is who you know almost as much as what you know. And, and being able to reach out to those people, you know, you can say what you want about my boss at Hyannisport. He, he was tough to work for, but man, did I learn a lot. You know, it's a shame the way it ended for him there. You know, he taught me, you know, knowing my customer and understanding how to compromise and negotiate and not sound like a salesman, you know. Um, yeah, he had his corny moments and he was being sarcastic with the fake smile. And But for the most part, you knew what you were getting with him. You know, there was no phony golf pro. There was no, you know trying to be prim and proper and because of that the members never even dreamed about going anyplace else to buy their merchandise you know um reminds me of my former club back in the early 90s they began a tradition there that is one of the favorite traditions that i think there is in golf and i wish more clubs would kind of take on some of this i know it gets a little expensive at times and it sounds like a large bet with what apparel cost now but you know they started playing matches for shirts you know it's just so much more fun to have that piece of i beat you to wear to the club next weekend you know so instead of a 30 or 40 dollar nassau they were playing for a 30 or 50 dollar cotton shirt you know that was what things cost back then so obviously prices like in every industry have skyrocketed now so 
shirts are closer to a hundred dollars you know for a lot of those guys that can barely afford to be a member there they can't afford to lose literally lose a shirt off their back you know um but if they have different price points in the shop you know and, and you're playing with somebody that you know doesn't have the money that can afford the high end the peter millar the grayson uh foot joy you know the high end prices but you know they can afford 40 or 50 bucks all right well let's play for an under armor solid or a puma solid or you know um there's so many brands that can come in under 70 dollars um especially if you're using all the programs that's the other thing that i don't get from golf pros uh, reps are there to help you like literally just let them talk there's a chance you're going to find out some things that you didn't know about sales numbers and you know what discounts happen at certain levels and is that you know those five extra scotty cameron putters that cost you an extra two thousand dollars but get you to that next level and get you the discount which is 15 percent off everything you know it makes sense most golf pros don't want to risk it and they they don't spend the money where it needs to be spent you know and then they end up with a bunch of expensive shirts at the end of the year that they're now discounting or they're selling to people with credit so there's no revenue really coming in that revenue is already coming gone at most places um the places that do it right obviously the credit money is still there and the and the apparel is paid for so you're ready to go but um you never know you know if you don't have a price point in your golf shop for every member in every level of member you send the message of you don't belong you know this episode was inspired by a club posting an ad for a member guest and rather than blast that club let's discuss it productively you know what successful clubs understand is that morale is everything you know, at a private club, if you don't respect your golf course and your golf club, you're not going to bring guests. You're not going to support the club. You know, it's, I see it so often at so many clubs. And the best way to raise morale is with a great condition golf course. That's what we sit around and talk about. You know, uh, most clubs, it's golf talk. It's only certain places where it gets heated and political and things like that but most guys that just got my i shouldn't say that most golfers that just got finished playing around just want to talk and hang out and talk golf and what they just played and that birdie putt that they missed on 15 and you know um you can listen you can tell tell me that you are the biggest marketing genius and i quote in the world and come up with the most creative advertisements of anybody in golf. But nothing compares to the impression made on a guest at an immaculate golf course playing a member guest. Roll the red carpet out. Don't try to pimp out every last dime out of it. You know, if you overprice it, you make people that weren't going to bring guests not bring guests anyway. I've been doing my research in the last couple of days since i heard heard the the cost of the local club um in everywhere that i've kind of found is usually on average of about four guest fees you know most of the clubs that are charging 125 for a guest fee seem to come in around 450 to 500 for a member guest and that should be plenty to run an unbelievable member guest you know you want the guys that don't usually bring guests to get excited about it you know it's a lot of money you know i'm gonna bring three guests it's you know a hundred dollars for their guest fee and i'm gonna wine and dine and we're probably gonna have some lunch and some drinks oh wait i can bring three guests for basically the same prices get food and prizes put on a show for my friends and have a chance to compete sign me up it's a winner you know, it, it's a no brainer. Then you get the clubs that say, oh, well, you know, everybody runs them on Wednesday. Well, Wednesday is our biggest day. Okay. Well, I'll give you that chance. 
chances are if done properly and the member guest sells out, you're going to beat your Wednesday numbers. But they said that to me at my former club when they argued again and again against having member guests. Finally, it was me and the owner who were arguing for and we won. We compromised. We did them on Mondays and we sold out every single one. So you're not going to tell me that you can't run a member guest for $500 a team on a Monday when there's no revenue coming in and say you're not making money. It's just, you see the places that go on and on and on that just nickel and dime your members, you know, what happens is instead of going to a member guest and having fun, you go to a member guest and you worrying about how much you spend and you nickel and diming everything. And the last thing you want your members talking about when you have three guests is the nickel and diming that the club is doing. You, you know, the, the, the thoughts of, man, I wish I could afford this place is exactly what you want to creep into a guest's head when they're playing a member guest, you, you got them. They're there. That's when you sell. That's when you put the, the show on, right? It's, it's, you know, it's not really that bad. I pay monthly, you know, if I go hard one month, you know, I slow it down the next usually works out to about the same as to what, you know, a, a membership would cost every year. And you'd be surprised, you know, um, you're going to use it way more when you're a member. You, you, it, it just is what it is. You can show up and play six holes, grab a drink and hit some putts and you're not spending whatever the nine hole rate fee is to go play golf. So there's ways to sell without sounding like a salesman. And when your guest fee is a hundred dollars a player and you're selling a member guest for five fifty, where's the value in that? What am I getting out of it? You know, I can just bring three guys here on a Saturday afternoon, play golf, and then we go to dinner at the Black Whale for the same amount of money, if not less. So it, it just makes no sense. You know, um, again, my former club, one of the most important, not important, one of the most subscribed tournaments back in the day was the Spring Barbecue. And they do an amazing job with that tournament. Um, it's usually subs usually full but not like it was back in the day. Um, I don't remember exactly what year it was. I want to say 2004. Um, I know Joe Cordani was the, the pro at the time, and they gave out Scotty Cameron um, divot tools as a tea gift. And that's why I know that that's why I know what I'm about to say, because it was a double shotgun full morning and afternoon you chose if you played the morning, you got breakfast. If you played in the afternoon, you got lunch. And then everybody came back for night for the barbecue. And it was awesome. And it was usually most people brought guests. It was usually at least one member, one guest with another member and another guest or a member and three guests. And it was a great day. It was fun. And then slowly but surely it became about money and they started raising the price and and it became less value, and then everybody stopped playing. So the tournament kind of died a little bit for a few years, and now they're coming back because of COVID and the members that we have. But it's one of those they're starting to price themselves out again. Um, you know, it, it's way too big of a discrepancy between a member member team and a member guest team. All you're doing is encouraging members not to bring guests. You know, and then you have it and so so conversation um so so condition and the conversation changes you know um again you go back to the conversation with the guest while they're there that day and you're trying to you know you're trying to sell them on your club and if you do guess what that's probably another member guest team next year so does that sound like a conversation somebody's had at a member guest you know I know I have. It's crazy. Uh, I loved member guests as a golf pro. You know, then you add in a raffle for, you know, five dollars for one, twenty for five. You have a the cart girl selling them outside. You know, smiling, laughing with everybody. All the golfers, male or female, usually 
participate um in whatever you bring in 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 raffle money you, you give out in merchandise you know so that's say you get twenty five hundred dollars in the raffle that's twenty five hundred dollars in sales in the golf shop for doing nothing you know now you add in some hit the green double your money cash and now you're having a great day you know even if it's a break even it's a win for the club because it's you're getting eyes on the property and you you're getting members to participate in in things that they would never participate in and and if you think hit the green double your money is a loser you're crazy um how many times do you see member guests you you see the guy yeah i'll take 25 dollars. well then he misses the green and he has 25 dollars. well what can you buy in the golf shop for $25? Well, at my club, hats were 20. You know, the cheaper shirt I had was 40 or 50. So chances are they're spending extra money. Um, so it's not just the $25 that they hit or the double your money that you give away. It's the resid residual sales and, and what you get out of it, right? Um, so even if you break even, it's a club. An another morale booster are inter-club matches, you know. Um, and this isn't a knock on my former club, but one of the, the the worst things of the South Coast area down here in Massachusetts is there isn't one. You know, you got New Bedford, you got Reservation, you got LeBaron Hills, Fall River, Segregancet, the Bay Club, Catanset, uh, Marion Golf Club. I mean, if you want to throw in the, the public golf, you got uh, Allendale, the Whale, Acushnet. Now you go down to Rhode Island, there's so many clubs that could have been, you know, un unbelievable league opponents. But, you know, you, you got too many guys in power that think the members that don't want the members to travel because if they do, they start seeing conditions and start th seeing things at other clubs that, you know, make man make you scratch your head at what management is doing. Um so when members don't go away, they have no clue. And it's just easier, you know, it's easier to control. It's easier to control a narrative. Um, oh, we can't afford to do that. But when you start to see all these clubs on the same finance level as yours, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it's eye opening, you know, I, I loved member guests, you know, we brought member guests to every single one. I think I played every single member guest when I was a member at my former club and man, did we have a blast. And, and I love being able to reciprocate the invites. I played member guests all over the state. And the, the one thing I've learned is, you know, my own habits. If, if people are at member guests and the sun's shining, believe me, the drinks are flowing. The tabs will be high. Um, if you, if you make them feel unwelcome, then, then you're going to be, missing out on money you know <laughs> trust me I, I i couldn't wait to, to get to a member guest have a cocktail and and have some fun and spend some money you know um it's just a way to ha hang out with your boys especially for somebody like myself who's in the golf business and you know time is difficult and, and rounds of golf is diff are difficult um and again, uh, encourage your golf professionals to, to get out and play golf. You know, Michael Block was awesome. And again, I, I don't know where the, the backlash came from on his comment. I thought it was pretty spot on. You know, um, if he could hit it 340 on average, he was pretty good around the greens. And, and, you know, it's a lot easier to make natural birdies when you're hitting wedges than when you're hitting seven irons. So I don't know where the backlash on his comment came from about, you know, I, I think I could be one of the best in the world, but again, encourage your golf professionals to play golf. You know, how many guys, um, that used to break par on a regular basis can't break 80 now, you know, y y you see the golfers that just aren't golfers anymore because they got in the business and now golf is just not fun to them anymore. Um, that's where this podcast came from for me. I, 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 I didn't want to get back in the industry, but I knew at some point, somehow, some way, I would be back playing golf and I'd be back wanting to talk golf and, and, and 
a positive way and share some of the things that I've learned over the years. Um, you know, I know I did that little mini episode for game seven on Monday with Tempe with Adam Tempesta from Tempe's Tees. And that's exactly what I want. You know, I want this to be a podcast where people come on, you know, we, you, you play golf, you have a good time, you talk trash with your boys or your girls, you know, your friends that you play, you have some laughs, you spend too much money, you know, because that's what we do as golfers. And it's all about the bragging rights, you know, especially a member guest. My group was better than yours today. Let's go. Give me the money. It doesn't matter if it's a $20 prize or if it's a $200 prize. I want to win. I want to play golf. It's competitive, right? That's why I don't understand the whole the cheating with your handicaps and stuff like that. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, why would you ever want to feel guilty over a win? And if your handicaps are as skewed as some of these players are, you can't have a win and not tell me um, – you you feel guilty you know uh again I, i'm gonna finish up real quick with some things a couple other things you know i when i saw the price at my my local club for that member guest i just kind of shook my head because you you hear the expression that oh they don't support the club and they don't do anything and they don't spend any money well you don't give them any incentive to and I started calling around, you know, I was going to start rattling off what different places cost, but you know, I, I don't have to, you, you know, um, I have members at Worcester, Oyster Harbor, Winchester's Marshfield country club, Boston golf, um, uh, trying to blank OS. Um, who else did I reach out to? I reached out to all of these people. Thorny Lee was probably the most affordable and, member friendly one um the great value for their member guests there but you know it's usually four times what your guest fee is you know tpc boston is a thousand dollars a team it's over the top all day it's open bar it's food food and unlimited anything you can think of but you know their normal guest fee on a normal day is 200 bucks so it's not that far off from four times your guest fee so Again, for anybody out there trying to run some member guests or whatever, you know, I, I can see if you have to add to it, I mean, I mean a little, okay, I, I get it. But don't go, you know, an extra few hundred over four times you, your guest fee. And if, if you can't run a quality member guest charging four times your guest fee and then even add it a little bit more, then you're probably not charging enough for your guest fee. You know, again, it's you you looking at things from all kinds of angles. And if you're not, you're not doing your membership or your your self a service, you know. Um, again, there's only so many possible customers. So. You know, when you get a place like my former club, and again, I hope I didn't rant too much about them tonight, but when you get dumber and dumber that have a guy that, that just res disrespect member after member after member, you know, and then they tell you, oh, well, if you don't like it, you can leave. And then you try to leave and they say, oh, wait, no, 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 you can't leave. You know, it's like, whatever. It, it just, it's laughable and it gets frustrating more than anything because you start to see it more and more around the state and around the country and that's why golf pros are leaving the industry you know how many like i said how many guys that used to break par can't break 80 um a buddy of mine i'm not going to get into names but we've worked together he outlasted every pro at the club Hell, he even outlasted the name of the club. And he's now the head pro at the former club that I used to, one of the former clubs that I used to work at. And he struggles to pass his PAT. You know, when he went to school to be a golf pro, the PAT was the last of his worries. You know, you didn't think of, oh my God, I might not be able to break 77 twice. That was, you know, you did that hungover, you know, on a Saturday morning after your birthday. 
now you get these guys, they don't play golf, they don't enjoy it, and then the PGA is going to tell them you can't be a golf pro. Well, I, I think we've gone a little too far away from golf for golf pros and a little too far on, you know, the business side of things. So I agree there has to be a happy medium on both, but um, there has to be exactly that. It has to be in a, a happy medium. So, again, I, I, I don't want to keep ranting on my former club, but I, I can't help bring it up. You know, um, I'm not going to go into whether or not they're one of the ones that I'm talking about with the member guests, but it is, you know, people can take out of this what they will. You, you know, going forward, like I said, now that I don't have to worry about making this a financial windfall, um, I can have some fun and we're going to have some guests on and we're going to talk about some stuff that, yeah, I get it. A lot of golf pros don't want to talk about because it sounds like we're complaining and we're whining. Trust me when I tell you, um, for every one bad experience in the golf industry, I had a hundred good ones. You know, it just got to a point for me where I just felt kind of unappreciated. People were, you know, calling me for everything above and beyond from can I get a free fit to, you know, I know you're at Worcester tomorrow, but can you fit me in the morning before you play? You know, just it just got to a point where it wasn't fun anymore. And um, I started to resent golf. I started to resent people in golf. And I started to resent friends and family because, you know, I just hated everything and everyone and that's not a golf problem that's a life problem you know and we're working on that too so this podcast honestly has been as helpful to me as anything you know my my mom was laughing somebody that's been listening reached out to her with um i don't know if i said this on another episode or not but reached out with um a therapist that was available and, and would be willing to see me and i i looked at her and i laughed and i was like telling people to f off on this podcast there's more therapy than any one hour session could ever get and it's free so um i'm back i i think my friends are starting to see it i think um especially the business people that are listening to this and the people that have respected me as a golf professional for the past 25 years are are realizing that I think we've gotten a little too far away from listening to golf train people. You know, you can't run a member owned private club as if it was a used car lot. You know, there's give and take. There has to be some losses to the members or some not even losses, some giveaways to the members. You know, the, the member guest is a perfect example. It's not a loss. Even if you break even on the day you win, you know, there has to be some of those. There has to be some give and take. Or, you know, it just becomes another privately owned for-profit club. You know, that's the best part about member-owned clubs is they're not for profit. Everything that you take in has to go back. So, you know, on the day that you run in a member guest, I'm sure there's a tax break that you can find for uncharged guest fees that, you know, it all goes to the club as a tournament fee. There's ways around things. And if you have a good accountant and you have a good team that's trained in the golf industry, that's where it starts. Um, a revolving door of employees any time a golf conversation comes up, except for the one employee that's average at best to stay, tends to be a problem. So, all right, guys, I think I've uh, covered what I wanted. I've reached out to the ladies behind the scenes. I hope uh, I get at least a couple of them to come on for next week. If not, I will find out, you know, it's Women's Golf Month, so I figured what a better way to kick it off than, than getting a couple influences and a couple of professionals that own their own companies to come on and, and talk some golf. So um, ladies reach out. I'm excited. I think it could be an awesome show and do a lot for all of us. All right. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for the support. And I can't wait to get back playing golf.
Let's go.